This week I went to a quantum foundations conference in Vienna and I thought a fun way of recording some video content from the conference is to do some video interviews with quantum physicists. So I asked a bunch of quick fire questions. So here we go. What do you work on? I worked on the analysis of the experiments, the mic test, where the gravity is quantum or not. And then I did quite some work on the interpretation of quantum mechanics, in particular relational quantum mechanics, and also some foundational questions about the probability and time orientation. Quantum thermodynamics, I'm looking at a dynamical model of quantum measurements that are inspired by those of thermodynamics and consistent with thermodynamic principles. The interplay between space-time and quantum theory. I also work on quantum reference frame. So asking questions about how possibly the quantum nature of our devices that we use to probe space-time might influence our observations. I will work on quantum reference frames. I will work on because I just started my PhD here one month ago. Quantum key distribution in noisy channels, which is about how we can securely transfer a secret key to encode messages between people, just like you do in, say, WhatsApp. I try to understand what are the true features of quantum theory that defy any classical explanation. The interface of quantum theory and gravity. What does the world look like from the perspective of a quantum system rather than a classical system? I work on the shareability of entanglement, especially for states which have nice symmetries. Bell's experiment and our limitations of quantum theory and what implications this has. I work on non-locality and specifically how do you study quantum correlations from the outside without us dealing in the structure of quantum mechanics. What problem do you find most interesting or exciting at the moment? Whew, there are many. <laughs> so. What principles of quantum theory and gravity we should retain and which ones we should maybe get rid of when trying to combine those two theories? First one is, if you have a very powerful quantum computer, but if you're a classical user, how can you ever verify the answer of a quantum computer? What would be the smallest list of bad nibs which would allow me to reproduce the quantum set, at least kinematically? And the second is still, why is quantum mechanics or quantum physics formulated the way it is formulated? These experiments to make claims about the quantum nature of gravity based on entanglement between masses. I'm working a lot on the interpretation of quantum mechanics. I'm also working on probably a bit of love. On quantum gravity, it's about like the smallest elements of space, quantum geometry, and these are two completely separate questions, but I love doing different things. I'm trying to develop a new ontological framework, which is different from the standard hidden variable models. Causal inequalities are basically trying to play games with the order in which events happen. We can make some interesting physics happen, just like with Bell's theorem. It's funny how this is something that we can actually realize in a lab. If we're talking about shareability, how we can use local transformations and how this restricts the shareability of states. So new work I've been doing in the field of quantum probability. Probabilities are no longer strictly between zero and one and I'm especially interested in how that relates to statistical mechanics and thermodynamics and philosophical questions to do with the nature of those thermodynamics. What's your take on Bell's theorem? Again and again it makes me question some of my assumptions about the world. I think it's an endless source of both confusion and inspiration. I think it's amazing, confusing, and there might be a lot of work still on it. I think Bell's theorem is a remarkable result, probably one of the most profound results that we ever had in physics. It challenges causality, causal explanation, locality, makes us question about reality. It sent quakes in the community. We're still having conversations about it 60 years later. The closest that we have in real life to magic, basically, effectively to breaking the rules of reality. I remember very vividly learning about it as an undergraduate and thinking, this can't possibly be right, there's something else going on here. And then you read all the ways that smart people have tried to reconcile the thing that's going on there and realize none of it works. And you think, uh, wow, I want to learn more about this. Bell theorem, the kind of uh, the 1964 version, right? there's that kind of local realism is it compatible with quantum mechanics where realism means kind of determinism, right? The lesson I draw from this actually is just that uh, quantum mechanics is local, but it's fundamentally indeterministic, right? It's kind of statistical theory, but without an underlying reality. I think it's one of the greatest discoveries, so I work on it, so I'm biased, obviously, but I think it just tells you really that from the classical observations only, you can deduce that there is something greater than classical physics. 
that certain physical quantities don't have predetermined value until you observe it. It's very different from what you think about every day-to-day -day life. We need to rethink realism. You need to shift what you describe as the real properties of a system in order to keep this really fundamental principle of locality that individual systems are independent from each other. I'm not a physicist by training and once I heard that I left all my AI courses and switched to quantum and computation and quantum mechanics being my master's program. So personally for me it had a big influence. Ah, oh, best of yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but I would like to skip that question. <laughs> yes. it's, not, it's, not, because it's not objective. Okay. What's your best idea for solving quantum gravity? <laughs> quantum gravity is definitely above my pay grade. We need some creative out there ideas because it's very clear that the problem is going to be with us for a very long time. Look at our best theories, quantum mechanics and general relativity. What is the difference between these theories and what came before in terms of physical principles? How can you put them together, like superposition, decoherence, entanglement on the quantum mechanics side? and on the gravity side, the fact that things are always measured in relation to other things. I believe that it's worth pursuing an effort, trying to relationalize gravity and quantum, try to understand the role of observers, measurement apparatus, and so on. This might require solving the measurement problem. We do have to solve the measurement problem. Once we understand what is the reality of quantum theory, we can understand also how to connect with gravity and other parts of physics. Reformulate into a quantum picture rather than looking at these semi-classical pictures. My best idea would be more sociological. I have a system which allows people more time to learn different fields, less pressure to publish incremental results quickly, but take three years to learn a different approach, having more interdisciplinary focus. I have no idea, but if you ask me, I think indefinite causal structures might help. Is gravity really quantum to begin with? And what are the consequences of having the gravitational field in a quantum state? Now we are getting closer to this experimentally. I think it's very cool, like this approach. So, short time. So, during my master's, I used to work in STEM theory related stuff. If you want to quantize gravity, that's not going to work. I think a better idea is to relay with the relative values. I think that should be the one to relativize quantum mechanics. So, that space time emerges out as a classical concept rather than trying to quantize it first time. Although I'm a dumb physicist. So. And the final question is. What would you be doing if you weren't doing physics? I can imagine a parallel life where I went in the music direction. Oof. That's a hard question that I'm asking myself, actually. I'm talking about physics in some way or another, or science in general. Whether that's through teaching or outreach or communication, I'm just really passionate about science and sharing it with as many people as I can. I used to think that I would go live off the land in a cabin somewhere, and uh, during COVID I tried growing things and I found it very hard so the squirrels ate all my tomatoes and I realized that dream is dead so I'm not sure as of yet. Probably philosophy. <laughs> yes. I like very much to, to think very deeply and having an interdisciplinary approach in philosophy and physics for foundational physics. I think it's necessary. I really like philosophy, so if I had to stay still in an academic environment somehow I would do that. If not at all, maybe try to follow some sports. Well in the past I was bumming around in India for a year when I didn't want to play physics and then again I quit and I was working at a, at a restorative agriculture project. I think I'd either be a teacher or a, a medical doctor or a therapist or something like that. I would be doing mathematics, which is the easy way out. If you want the not so easy way out, I would be a comic. <laughs> My tension is always between the completely abstract world of theoretical physics and mathematics and the completely embodied world. Probably computer science, because I was I'm, I'm a computer scientist by training. I think there is quite an overlap. Too many things actually. If the market wasn't so bad, I would really like to be a vet. Cats are 50% of my personality. I would totally spend my, my entire day in like animal shelter. And at night, I would like to do game then. I would probably move to the ocean and see what will happen. I would probably be doing politics or law. I was really interested in those growing up and I'm actually really interested in scientific policy and how we can use our scientific research to help better the community through our knowledge. I hope you've enjoyed finding out a bit about what quantum physicists think about. Thanks for joining. Bye.